Now that we understand the importance of understanding our essential self, what questions can we ask ourselves to get to that point where we really know who we are? That's what we're going to talk about today. Your mind will answer most questions if you learn to relax and wait for the answer. William S. Burroughs. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to give you an announcement about the podcast. I'm trying to experiment to see if we can't all do a little bit of digesting about the challenges of these books and the reading of these books. I'm going to move this podcast to Tuesday and we're going to go to every other week with the podcast Small Steps with God on the other weeks. Small Steps with God is exactly like this podcast, except it's religious books. Sometimes there's crossover because it might be helping you be more productive, but it is more of a Christian religious tilt to it. So you can find on all your pod catchers of choice. If you have anything to say about that change, please email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. You can also message me on Twitter. I'd love to hear from you. Today, we're going to continue our conversation about the essential self. And we learned last time how finding out who we are deep down inside can help us go that next step. It tells us not just who we were, which is fine, but it tells us who we could be and how we get there. We're going to use the framework of the book, Being Essential, Seven Questions for Living and Leading with Radical Self-Awareness by Dane Dunstan. I enjoyed this particular part of the book. I thought there were some good points about how to understand yourself better. There are areas it goes into I was less I guess, interested in that didn't go in directions that I thought was as strong as the first parts of the book. But the middle part of the book is where we're going to talk about today, and this will end our two-part series. But the idea is now, what questions can we ask ourselves so that we can get to the core bit of who we are? And I think if you want to fill in this book with the questions, what it goes to, more details about each of these questions, this book will give you a good guideline on how to get there. And so he says that his first question is, where are you? This is what he also calls the question that God asked Adam, where are you in the Garden of Eden? Do you think God didn't know what Adam was thinking, where he was? Was it a question of position? I'm pretty sure God could find him. But the question is a self-conscious question, a question that takes self-awareness. Before we were asking the question, where were you, as looking at that child. But now we want to know, where are you right now? Where are you in life? How did you get here? How does every sense of your being point to where you are right now? What patterns got you to where you are living right now? It's a very big question, right? And like I said, more details in the book. He goes through everything about it. But he says that every time we're trying to navigate, whether we're in any kind of vehicle at all, the important part is we know where we are and where we want to go. When we know those two things, we have navigation. Without those two things, we are lost. We're not going in any direction. That leads us to not either changing or developing at all, or we go in the wrong direction entirely. And once we understand that direction of where we are now, now we're in a position where we can move on and go to where we're going to go next. And the second question is, why are you here? This is really important. What is the meaning behind it all? I know the meaning behind my life. Now that I understand the meaning of my life, everything is going much better. I know why I'm here. I know the purpose I am on this planet for. That makes everything else much better. And if you can figure out why you're here, what are the realities behind what you do, why you're doing it, If you don't know those answers, and maybe your where are you is pretty lacking. If I was that person who I was in my 20s, I'm playing video games, I'm trying to pay my bills. That's all I'm trying to do. Those two things, pay my bills, play video games. I had no direction in life. The why I'm here is very thin. Mm. I probably would have thought myself in the wrong direction as soon as I understood that main point. So I think the question is very good. What drives you? But again, if you are very thin on this, then perhaps that's showing you something else too. Who are you being is question number three, meaning what role are you playing? When you know yourself, you know what role you are in life. And who are you? 
Are you being the parent? Are you being the person who's irresponsible? Are you being like I was, just an okay person sitting on the couch trying to entertain myself? Mm. You know, and so by finding out who you are, and it may be many things, you could be a project manager, I could be a team lead, I could be a parent, I could be a girlfriend or a wife or a child in high school. I can be all these different things, but f- identifying what roles you're playing right now, I think that's going to help you a lot understand exactly what it is. He says that every time we get into this, we have to know whether right now you're being what he calls your essential self, or are you doing something that's part of your synthetic self? The synthetic self, he goes into with quite a bit detail, is always going to get it wrong because they're not really you. And when I think back about it, knowing myself now and today and how motivated I am to get things done and to do things, funny that Jill, who didn't have a direction, is very synthetic. That is not the kind of person I am. I usually have, even in my worst moments, I knew what I needed to do next. And for a good spell of my 20s, I was just lost. So by not answering maybe the who I am, it could have given me pause to try to figure that out. Question four, do you want? Boy, that's important too. What is it you want in life? You, you know where you are right now and you know who you are, but what is it you're going for? What is it you're dreaming for? One thing I did like about this book is he gave a lot of examples out of pop culture, of movies and television shows of people who had that kind of example where the person didn't really know. He calls it a character in search of a story. It took some action that forced this lackadaisical person into action. I spoke at a conference last year that was in the place where Groundhog's Day was filmed. And I had an afternoon to walk around and see all the places in the movie Groundhog's Day. I was kind of thrilled about the whole situation, to be honest. But I love that movie. But he's a guy who is a strong personality. He obviously had talent. He was on a major network news as a weather guy. No direction. He was just flying through life, right? And so he comes in and finds he wants this woman to love him. He wants people to like him. He wants to learn things. And throughout that entire reiteration of his day, he finally came into focus. He started not wanting anything. So I think that's a great analogy to this whole part is what is it you want your story to be? What is it that you want out of life? And maybe you couldn't get it because of certain circumstances, or maybe you couldn't get it because you need a new skill or you need something. Or maybe you're just not motivated to do those things and you just need sort of like a kick in the pants to get going and do those things. He said that there's this reaction to your old life. You have to realize that you've done your whole life to yourself. But is it what you wanted? No. If something bad happened, that's not really what you wanted. He says, but we spend most of our lives thinking that's what we want. Quote, if you say, I don't feel that way, that's authentic. That is you understanding that your agency and feelings, but does that make your feeling better? If you want to feel joyful instead of angry, you suddenly realize you have your essential self that can put you in control of that. If you just feel like a leaf on the wind, you're being tossed around by this and that, and you have no agency and you have no direction that you're going and you have no place to go, starting with your essential self will help you understand that. And now we know where we started from, we know where we're going to, and now we have a direction. Five, what wants to happen? Boy, there's a really interesting thing. What wants to happen? It gives this feeling of the world having a motion or a direction and that we have to go in the direction of what the world wants to happen. Right now, maybe think of it like this. I understood in high school, that technology is where this world wants to go. Computers was the next big thing. I could see it. I could see it clearly how this was going to take over everything. And you know what? I got good at computers because to me, that is what the world wanted, technology. Luckily, it was a great bet. I didn't pick ballet dancing or something. Nothing against ballet dancing, but technology was where it was at. I could see it as being the next big thing. And so I got good at it. That made a huge difference in my life. But understanding which direction, maybe not even the world, but your world, 
What does the world want you to do? What does the world have this direction? Now, I'm a Christian. I believe that God wants things from me, wants things from you, wants things from everybody. And primarily, it it is taking those gifts that we were given and doing something beneficial with it, doing something amazing with it as compared to just ignoring it. So I do believe in this bigger picture of what the journey is. And so if you can spend some time, I think this is the hardest one, thinking about what it is that should be happening in your life. What is that nucleus of it? I think you're going to be better at getting what you want. These other questions were very simple, but this next one is sort of metaphysical and it's going to take a while. I wanted to do X, Y, and Z. Maybe I wanted to get married and have children. I did. I did want to get married and have children. I was terrible at dating. I've said that before. I was terrible hanging out with men. It made me nervous. I felt overweight. I felt insecure. That was not going well for me. I guess I'm at a cross point, right? The cross point is, is either I got to spend my energies figuring out how to be great, meeting men, relating, I relate well to men, but dating men and getting married and having kids. That was one direction. I could focus on that. But because I wasn't doing those things, I had to find other things in my life to spend my energy, my resources, my creativity. I think I would have been extremely happy as a parent, but that wasn't what was going on with me. So I had to realize at some point I had to figure a way to make my path in life good without having that. Six, what don't you know? Which it's easy for us. We know what we know. I know what I know. And we have this idea of what it is that we're good at. Sometimes he says that we have problems because our synthetic self tries to protect our ego. Let's say that you're in the medical world and you say, oh, I'm not very good at computers. I don't want to do anything with computers. Well, I hate to tell you this because I work in the industry. Computers are taking a grip into your job. It's not going to replace you. We're always going to need people to treat human beings and to be there with people and to help them understand their medications and what's going on and to record data. Always going to be a part of it, but their jobs are going to be filled with technology. So someone might say, well, I don't think computers are important, so therefore I don't have to learn them. It's not the way the world is going. This honest reality of what is it you don't know that's hampering you, that's stopping your life and not letting you move on. That's what we need to understand. What is it that I need to learn next or at least get comfortable enough with next so it's not keeping me down? And I think the worst of it is that quote, Donald Rumsfeld, who said there's unknowns and then there's unknown unknowns. The thing that you don't know that you don't know, that's the one that's going to get you. So can you take a look at your life and understand what it is you don't know and where you maybe have to go to get the things you want to get? So you may say, I want to become this fantastic researcher in cancer. I hate computers. Is there a way you can take a class, do something? that gets you so that you're okay with it, that you're not afraid of it anymore, that maybe you get reasonable at it enough so that you can do your job. My software does not require you to be a computer programmer. It means that you have to fill in buttons. You don't have to know a lot about computers, but knowing a little bit so that you don't get nervous about it will help you get a long way. Question seven, how does this feel? We went from very easy to answer questions But went now to, how do we feel about the world around us, he says. How do we feel what's going on in our towns, I think, in our environment, in our job? What is it we're feeling now at a gut level? And he he gives this example that if you say something about what you want, maybe your answer is you want to stop being so angry all the time. Maybe you have rage problems and you want to get past that. How does that make you feel? Out of control? Worried that people will run over you? People won't be thrilled with your new behavior. So once you know what you want, which direction you're going, what you don't know, you're going to have a mixed bag of feelings about it. Even starting this podcast, I realized I really wanted to have a podcast. And when I saw it actually happening, nervous, excited, thrilled, couldn't sleep at night, just that sense of calm that I think I found the thing I love. 
So you're going to have a mixed bag of it, but understanding where your heart is, how your feelings are, that's going to be really, really important to where you go next. Because maybe you're afraid, right? You've decided I'm my destiny is to become a developer. I'm not a developer, but I got to take classes. I've always wanted to be a programmer. I used to be good at this and I missed my shot. I know people like that, but they have a longing for it. So then the question is, how do I get there? Well, you're going to have to take classes. You're going to do it. And maybe what you're feeling is excited because you finally figured out what your destination is, what it is that you are excited about and energized about. But maybe you're also frightened. It's going to take a few years in school. You're a little confused about where you might get that kind of money. Let's solve each of those steps, small steps at a time, so that you can overcome whatever it is that's going at them. Where I'm going to divert out away from this book is that if you feel a certain way about your goals, now we've come a long way. You understand more about you than you did before you did this exercise. Can you now go through this path of even matching it up with what Adam Savage said in his book, Every Tool is a Hammer? where he talks about making checklists and breaking things down into small steps. That was episode 163 and 164 of this podcast. Can you take these objects, break them down into doable chunks? Now you know you want to become a computer developer. It's always what you've been good at. You weren't able to go to school for it. You thought you had some gifts at it. What can you do now? Can you take that goal, break it down into small steps? First, I'm going to learn everything I can for free on the internet, YouTube, ChatGPT has a lot of lessons for developers out there. There are a ton of resources and apps to learn it. Great. Now I'm going to spend an hour every week learning development. Maybe it's going to take more like five hours, something like that. Once you get to the point where you've had all that down, what's your next step? Is it college or is it technical college or is it some sort of certification? I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you understand that even if you're mixed feelings right now, you're scared, you don't know what you want, you're a little nervous about the whole situation, knowing your essential self and knowing the direction that you think you should go that fits with your knowledge, your abilities, where you started from, where you're at right now and where you want to go. And even if, again, those emotions are a mixed bag, come up with small steps in order to get into the direction you want. My challenge to you is to look at something that you always wanted to do. But let's try something small, not maybe on this global scale. Can you go through these seven questions and find out where you are with that? For example, maybe you've always wanted to learn how to cook better. Maybe a lifelong goal, but not a life career change or anything like that, lifestyle change. Not big, but the small goal of something. What can you do to go through these seven questions? And then at the very end, this is the important part, Come up with practical steps to get yourself in that direction. Overcome some of those feelings of fear or anxiety you might have about it. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember again, I am trying an experiment with these podcasts. I have two podcasts that are reading podcasts, which means I practically read a whole book every episode of this podcast. I am going to now move this podcast to Tuesday. And it is going to be every other week. The other podcast, Small Steps with God, is going to be the other two weeks as we, you know, every other them. That one is exactly like this podcast, but it's about religious topics. Sometimes they cross over. For example, I did one on how to do social media from Sadie Robertson. And I always try to keep practical advice to daily living from whatever book I'm reading. If you like this podcast, I think you'll like that podcast too. And remember, our path to getting what our essential self wants starts with small steps.